Hey guys, how's it going? So let's continue with our paper. Question 31 says hydraulic systems are based on the fact that so hydraulic systems here, that's the buzzword. They are based on what principle? So what what principle or what fact? So the fact is liquids cannot be compressed. Okay. So hydraulic systems we use um sometimes pistons and uh, sometimes gears connected to pistons and the idea is if uh, the idea is that pressure is transferable through liquids that those are hydraulic systems so the assumption or at least in general uh, what we assume about liquids is that they cannot be compressed if we use air then we are going to have a problem because we might uh, move the pistol without it transferring the uh, pressure in the in the in any way that's sort of like definite or proportionate. So liquids can actually be compressed, but uh, you know it takes a great deal of energy. So in general, what we say is liquids cannot be compressed. Okay, that's the uh, law or the fact behind uh, hydraulic systems. So let's uh, move to question thirty-two. It says convection takes place in. So the convection takes place in. It's and fluids okay so fluids of which fluids simply means liquids plus gases and in convection uh, what happens is that there's some motion that's somewhat secular something like this so you'll be having let's say you have uh, some water here and uh, this water is going more or less like these some some secular motion of this water that, that you're seeing and it happens just because there'll be different densities here so it also happens in real life as uh, in um wind currents with wind currents as, as well but then in water what happens is the water here at the bottom if you're if this is uh fire or heat so let me just say heat so if you're heating this water if you're eating it what happens is this this water that's immediately uh you know within the vicinity of, of this heat so water it's, it's actually a poor conductor of heat so what happens is this water gets heated first before the water at the top this water becomes less dense and then that's how it starts moving here and the water that will be uh really cold here it starts moving downwards as well because it'll be heavier compared to, to that and that's why we have uh, the, this convection take, taking place so it actually takes place in and gases and liquids or in general in, in well using one term it takes place in fluids let's quickly move to question 33 question 33 says what's the purpose of a curved surface in a solar cooker so it's to absorb maximum energy from the sun is to focus energy from the sun to the pot is to reflect uh, heat energy away from the pot this one is definitely not so to absorb heat from the pot this one is definitely not well, if you're cooking using a solar cooker you want as much heat as possible to get to the pot so here this one it's actually very thoughtful but then unfortunately that's not true because um the cap surface it doesn't absorb any heat so it, it absorbs some but then in general that's not the purpose it doesn't absorb uh, heat what it does is just is it focuses energy from the sun to the port so that's why it's it's curved okay this one was uh, the the clue it's curved just because um they want to create a scenario where like light would bounce and then you know it'd be focusing and then it'd be bouncing also here and uh, then you're focusing here so here you'll be you'll be having your your port I'm very lousy at this but then yeah so i'm supposed to draw a port here very lousy but then you could understand so yeah it's to focus energy from the sun to the port we don't want the curved surface to absorb any energy we want the port or the um whatever you be cooking uh, in so the pan or the pot want you to absorb as much energy as possible so let's move to this so number 34 question 34 says the diagram shows a carburetor which part controls the amount of air that mixes out uh, with petrol 
So this one is an air filter, and then you have air coming in here. This one is called the chalk valve. Okay. So this chalk valve is it's uh what controls the amount of air that mixes with petrol. And here you have this one, uh the, this one is called the 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 it's called the throttle throttle valve. That's this valve here. So the throttle valve, it means if you are accelerating, uh you when when you put down the pedal, you are actually like introducing some of uh, fuel into the into the mixture. So you you do that through this uh the this throttle valve it's controlled by by your your acceleration so if you accelerate it means that you're opening uh this valve so this one controls the amount of metro petrol that you you're you're putting in this one controls the amount of air that you're putting in and then here they they mix in this chamber here so let's quickly move to you the next part the next part what does it say the next question says uh, air with pressure of 400 pascals acts on a wall five square meters. What's the force exerted uh, by the by the air? Okay, so you asked force. So here from is it primary school? I'm sure that we had the stuff in primary school. We knew that force, uh, the pressure equal to force divided by area. Okay, so here you require the force. So you can multiply both sides by A, you get force equal to pressure multiplied by, by area. So pressure is what? 400 pascals. And then the area is what? 5 square meters. And when you multiply these, you actually get 2,000, 2,000 watt newtons. Okay. So here you get D. Let's quickly move to question 36. The energy change that happens to information before transmission in a cell phone is so the energy change that happens uh, to information before transmission in a cell phone you're changing you're talking into a cell phone so that sound energy and then this sound energy it's being converted to what to electrical energy okay so it goes from sound to electrical then that electrical energy it's uh it, it generates some some signal so some electromagnetic waves these electromagnetic waves they travel and then they are received as as electromagnetic waves converted back to electrical and then afterwards you have sound energy again so you start from you want to transmit you're not receiving you're transmitting so you're starting from your voice your voice your device changes your voice into electrical signals okay so let's quickly move to the next part the next part says uh, an electrical appliance with double insulation does not have so it does not have an what an earth wire so if you if you are if you are an electrical appliance has double insulation it simply means that the casing for for that so you, you let's say it's a it's a rice cooker the, the 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 casing for that it means the outside part if the outside part is insulated or it's separated from the uh, inside electrical um, circuits, then there is no need for you to use an earth wire because it's almost impossible that you'd get electrocuted. Okay, so it would be joined into putter and earth wire. So that's why we chose B. Let's quickly move to question thirty-eight. Which which material is used to make a core of a magnet? So a core of a magnet, um, we use. We actually use iron, interestingly, um, and the reason we use iron is that iron, it's a, it's a soft magnetic material. What it does is that you can magnetize it and then it quickly loses it, its magnetization. Uh, the purpose of an electromagnet is uh, sometimes we'll be having uh, one contact here. So this contact, it's, uh, it's only uh, completed when this uh, contact here is energized or something. You want it such that if this is de-energized, then it can spring back, okay? So if you want it like that, you don't want any material that retains magnetism, of which this material here still, it retains magnetism, okay? That's why we don't use it as an electromagnet. And uh, copper, no. Aluminum, no. Okay, so we actually choose um, iron as an electromagnet. Let's quickly move to the next part. So the diagram shows an AC generator, which component uh, allows, uh, allows current to change direction. 
So the component that allows current to uh, change direction here, the, these these are brushes here. These are simple brushes, and here the, these are these are slip rings. So one one way you could have actually like figured out what to choose here is uh, that you're just supposed to choose at least something that's different than for a DC generator. Of which for a DC DC generator we know that we have a commutator, and the commutator it's the thing that disallows change in direction of current so obviously whatever we have here which would be slip rings is the stuff that allows that change uh, in the direction of current to happen and then slip rings we we just use them they they just uh, they, they're not exclusive to generators we use them whenever we want to create contact between something which is rotating and also the external electrical um, uh, circuits so here the slip rings would make sure that you know you're connecting to this and once 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 the uh, rotor it connects the slip rings then you can uh, get output power output through d which are the brushes okay so let's quickly move to question 40 so here you choose slip rings they are the ones that, that allow uh, for change of direction which diagram shows the relationship between voltage and and, uh, and current in a pure metal okay so all this except for for this one obviously all these they, they follow ohm's law so as, as voltage increases current increases proportionately but then the difference now is that one of them is a, is a pure metal what do we expect of a pure metal we expect it to have zero resistance zero resistance okay that's the essence of a pure metal it doesn't impose any resistance onto you on on our electrical current okay if it has zero resistance from ohm's law we know that voltage is equal to current times resistance so resistance is equal to voltage over current so whatever the the value the value of resistance here that we're supposed to measure at least for zero voltage it should be corresponding to zero current as well because we have zero resistance here whenever we don't have any any uh current flowing this should not register any 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 uh, resistance. So you, you can imagine if you want to test if something is a pure metal or not. Uh, hypothetically, what you could do is you could um, just measure the resistance of that of that thing when the circuit is dead. Okay, you open the circuit, you measure the resistance. That's how we measure the resistance anyway. If you record zero resistance, it means that 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 metal it's a pure metal. So we can actually interpret the same thing that we are saying in these graphs. So for zero resistance, um, for zero resistance, for, for zero uh, voltage, we have zero current here. We have this one getting through the origin. So we'd actually choose D. Okay. We'd actually choose D. This would be the, the pure metal. And this one, it's actually negative resistance for some strange reason this one it's positive resistance but then you have current flow already without any voltage this one you have voltage flow already without any current this is really meaningless you're supposed to choose d so that's it uh, make sure you like share and subscribe uh